the first time I heard you mention the name Edwin Valero before he came over from Venezuela to the U.S. And you told me when he gets here, I want you to take a look at him because he's the best prospect to come out of Venezuela in 30 years. Did you really believe that? Yes, I believe that because, number one, we had Fort Valero in the amateurs in a national tournament. With Francisco Panchito Bojado. Versus Bojada. Francisco Panchito Bojado. Valero won that particular fight. But in the last round, I recall, he staggered Panchito. And he almost staggered Panchito in the amateur, not with his skills and ability. And I remember that. Then when I got the uh, a call from a representative of Valero in Venezuela, he said, Joe, you have to take a look at the tape. I took a look at the tape, and, and I, it didn't impress me at first. But then I reviewed the tape again. And I started really going into the, uh, the techniques of this youngster. Mm -hmm. I can see his ability. I can see... The, the power, I could see the, the killer instinct that he presented. So when I mentioned that to you, I said, David, you've got to look at this young man. There was no doubt in my mind that there was not natural talent, but raw talent in this youngster. And it was a matter of maybe polishing that raw talent and, 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 and building a, a superstar to this kid. There was never any doubt in my mind. But through I had training for 30 years uh, a professional and amateur fighters and I'm working with Jody Boy and Ponce de Leon, Panchito Bojaro, Mike Enchondo. But I trained Edwin Valero from uh, Venezuela. He's a tremendous fighter, uh, tremendous talent. He loves to be in the ring. Yeah. You know, I told him, I, I told him uh, here. I said, you know what, I, I told him that uh, one of the things that the, the difference between you and a lot of other fighters here is that you love being in the ring. You don't matter how many rounds, but you just love it. That's your office, and it's like where you're comfortable, and like nothing else in the world matters but you in that ring. Just, you know, he just he gets in there, and, and uh, he's just a happy cat. I said, well, you know what, well, that's why, you, that's why you're going to be a superstar. If you continue to work and as hard as you do, you'll... You're gonna be a superstar. You're the next. You could be the next superstar of boxing. This man was was so sure of himself. His his power was so natural that in his mind he thought that he can go out there and just by throwing the first few shots he would destroy the opponent. And he was right. <laughs> You can see the improvement, you can see the talent, you can see his boxing ability. Whenever he knocked out an opponent, he was always thinking. Right. He would always go in and execute in time and change his speed and faith and, and jab and change the combinations and made it change power in mid-air like a Michael Jordan. He had that ability. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we tried to teach this youngster. And we were doing very well until the uh, bad news from the commission that the letter could not fight any more in the state. He, at the start of 2004, he gets suspended by the New York Athletic Commission. And he doesn't know if he's ever going to fight again. Now, I, I would say probably 75 to 95 percent of most professional fighters. So th they get that news, number one, they're mentally devastated. They don't know what the heck they're going to do. But you don't see them, if they don't know, if they know that they don't have a license to fight and there's no guarantee that they're never going to fight again, are you going to see them in the gym every day, no. day in and day out, no. training as though they have a fight coming up? He surprised me because he never stopped. He never. He never stopped one day to train. He, he have about a year and a half, I think one year and a half, don't fight over here in California. Believe me, he never, never, never stopped one day. Him and Ponce were what I call machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, these were not humans. I don't know. I don't know how this putting this guy in a, all together. Together, he, he he's 
you have everything. Get on the motorcycles and 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 and, and go uh, they would hold up people and and steal and cut the chains and right. that's the type of life that he had as a, as a, as a youngster. Valero was a wild man. His wife and 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 and, and baby it brought him back to earth. His boxing you know, brought him back to life to become the type of person he is, a human being. But Valero is a street warrior, mm -hmm. a street a, a gang, a street gang fighter. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this is. <laughs> Every time we went into a sparring session with any fighter in any gym, we always tell them the same thing. Valero and Paul said, mm -hmm. guys, listen, if you beat up on these guys, if, if you show them you know, that, that, that you are better than them and, and you go out there and try to destroy them and knock them out, we're going to lose our sparring. You know, I remember this thing because Lascano told me, I'll be back tomorrow. And I left, he left the headgear, gloves, cops in my gym. And he never coming back. And I remember Robert Santa Cruz was the first one up in the ring with him. And he says, he, after the first round, he comes back and he tells me, the, the guy cheats. And I go, what do you mean he cheats? Yeah, he hits in the arms. And it hurts. I go, well, don't let him hit you in the arms. You know, there were times when he didn't want to go out there. Joe, I want to go out there. And, and, hey, Joe, watch. Watch how I'm going to hurt him. And, and, no, Valero, listen. Why don't you do me a favor? Why don't we box him? Why don't we set him up? Why don't we destroy his guns? Okay. Man. Yeah, why don't we, arms, yeah. yeah, why don't we Why don't we hit the shoulders? Why, why don't we hit, hit him in the heart? Why don't we hit him in the neck? Why don't we go to the <laughs> Adam's apple and cut his breathing out? Yeah, why don't we stab him a couple of times? Don't go for the kidney shot. Why don't you stab him right down the middle? Juan Lascano didn't want to spar with him anymore. So it was basically the bulk of the sparring work that they got here in Southern California. It was with Jose Armando Santa Cruz, his brother Roberto, and Urbano Antillon, your guys. What is it about your guys? We never refuse anybody. 
We don't discriminate. Short, tall, soft palms, right handers, dirty fighters, bring them on, bring them all on. How we down, Valero? Listen, I want you. I want you to have any relationship with your beautiful wife because uh, we're gonna spar tomorrow. So maybe there was you know, maybe a day or in between where Valero would. would you can see that Valeria was weak. <laughs> but he went in there one time, and, and I, I think that the, uh, the brothers, the Santa Cruz brothers, they, they got to him. about six, seven miles, he said, Joe, not tomorrow, the following day, set it up for the following day. I'm going to give him an ass whipping. Joe, I'm going to destroy both of these guys. Because he knew in his mind maybe he was a little weak. Right. So we come back a couple of days later, and we spar, and we spar. I believe it was 14 rounds. Yeah. I let us spar 14 rounds. Right. And just simply, I mean, overpower these young people. Urbano, the first, the first time he goes, he don't hit that. I mean, he hits hard now, but he don't hit that fucking hard like everybody says. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, it's just Urbano being Urbano. Yeah. I, mean, fuck, I, don't, I don't see what all the big uh, commotion is all about. <laughs> but, um, but they went. They, they had sparred, I think, four times before that, before that one time when he got rocked. We spot on 
Monte Gion on several occasions. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Baleto came back to the corner and he said, Joe, come on now, come on. I said, that's, that's, just go out there. So I just play with him. Well, you know what, Dougie? He went out there and he tagged him. sparring for 15 years you know what I mean like you know out here yeah, world class gym era. I've never <laughs> seen yeah I've never seen a, a, a sparring session have to get stopped because somebody got hurt until that sparring session between that's Valero that's and he's, he's a I think that he's one of those freaks of nature you know, that um, that has that power that he's like the Julian Jackson of right. the back in the days that all it takes was one punch and he landed that punch and the fight was over and I think that's where it Edwin Valero has that, but it's not it's not common. You know, not something that we use often. Yeah, body shots, you know, yeah, you right. see those often, yeah. but not yeah. not to the chin or to the head, you know. Right. Yeah. Did that? Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised he's staying on the street. I gotta tell you, Bono's a tough son. Yeah. This will be man. He's, I know that. He's a tough. And, and he knows how to, he knows how to, oh, if you saw him against Valle, you know, he knows how to survive, right. finds a way. But, but he, uh, he did, he got hurt because, like I said, you know, he, he went, he reached for him, you know, something he knows he's not supposed to be doing, but, but he made a mistake and, and the other guy counted on it and got him. Then we came back to another gym here in uh, Maywood. Maywood. Mm -hmm. And sparred Auntie Young again, and I told uh, Rudy. I told Rudy, I said, Rudy, you sure you, yeah, Joe, we want the kid. I said, you shouldn't spar with him. He didn't. Again, he didn't stagger him. He didn't hurt him. But it was just vicious. I mean, Valero was... Yeah, he beat him up all over his body. Oh, he destroyed him. I remember Joe Hernandez, me and you know, you're going you're gonna to get your boy hurt. You're going to get your boy hurt. You don't, you know, you don't want to do this. I'm telling you. I go, you know what, Joe? I go, I want it and he wants it. And we want to, you know, we, we just need to be reassured again.
say it's just a freak of nature. And, and like this says, Armando, Jose Armando Santa Cruz is the only one to ever hold his own against him. And you know. Santa Cruz never seen him get hurt by Valero. Never. Never seen Santa Cruz get hurt. As a matter of fact, he's, a, a lot of times Santa Cruz was the one dominating him. He would always dominate him with, with, the, stri with the straight face. Because Mont yeah. Santa Cruz had his, had his number only because he would go just straight punches. Those long arms of him would, would neutralize that, uh, that, uh, that right hook. And also, uh, he had to stay active. Because if you, if, if you stand there with him, he'll hit you in the arms. But if you keep those, and the moment he's moving, you get those arms out, then he can't hit you in the arms. And you don't, you're not going to feel it. I'm not gonna feel that the pain because they they did they did claim to be hurt. But there's a fight that he had in Japan, Dougie, that uh, I didn't see Valero in a ring. Right, that was against Hiro Banda, one yes. of his comeback fights. I saw Valero going out there in a style which was worse than the style that he first had when he first came here to the right. U.S. I saw him go back to the old days and, and probably beyond, maybe at the beginning of his career where he would just try to knock these people out without even thinking in the ring. Right. What I see, for, you know, maybe for this particular fight coming up, which is a title fight for Valero, if the real Valero comes out, the real master with, with, with the, the finesse that he'd learned throughout and the experience throughout his 18 fights comes out, He'll think in the ring. But if we see the, the monster that we saw in Japan, we're going to be very difficult. You think he's going to beat uh, Mascara? Yeah, the guy likes to fight. Right, Mascara is a macho guy. Yeah, so, so I think the moment he gets tight, that's it. Fight's over. I think it, I don't think the fight goes more than two rounds. Mosquera have a, he have a lot of rounds, more in, in, in Valero. He have a, he's supposed to have more experience. In, in either he's go to the Olympians. But uh, I think Valero, because these guys, they have a lot of discipline. He have a lot of discipline. He's working hard in the gym. Uh, and, and about this fight for the championship fight, I think he's working like an animal. I know Valero. Valero gonna go in there and destroy this young man from the, from the, <laughs> from the first get go. Mm -hmm. He's gonna go in there, once he lands the first few shots on this youngster, I don't think that, uh, Mosqueda can uh, absorb the punishment that Valero will give him. Mm. He's not going to go in there and think. I, I think I know Valero a little, which is raw, mind you, yeah. because I think you know you get an experienced champion like Mosqueda could, could, could time you, make you miss, tie you up, and then you know and fight dirty. Yeah, right. Mosqueda employs right. a lot of rough keep, stuff. Keep his hands up and then let you shoot to the body, sidestep you. Anything can happen. I don't think Valero will, will, will fall into that trap. I think mm -hmm. Valero will come out aggressive. I think Valero, the, the Valero I know, I hope he's learned how to keep his hands up. I hope he's learned how, how to use his footwork for defense. I don't think so. I think that uh, the adrenaline, the, the idea of going for that world title, yeah. he's going to go back to being the Valero that came here from Venezuela, and he's going to go out there and he's going to try to destroy him, and I think he's going to accomplish that. I think his mission is, I am going to destroy him. I'm going to I'm gonna kill you. And that's exactly what he's gonna do. He's gonna destroy him. I'm not saying kill him, you know, for the word. But he's gonna destroy Mosqueda.